<laughs> okay, without further ado, I would like to welcome uh, I'd like to welcome Howard up front to introduce our guest today. And I wish y'all in the room could see this because uh, there, there's a picture here that I, I'll just describe. Uh, there's Dustin with past DGs and some past presidents uh, looking all happy and excited to do this. And then there's a picture of him looking at that look back uh, <laughs> at the fair loaded up with Coke and fries and just going, OK, I, I got to have a break. So <laughs> is, uh, without further ado, let's have uh, Howard introduce our district governor, Dustin. Go ahead and step back, Howard. <laughs> Yeah, as, you, as, as you probably know, I'm an assistant governor this year. Uh, there are about 10 of us throughout the district, and uh, we're responsible for contacts between uh, local clubs and uh, our district governor. And our local clubs here are the, the other Arcade Club, the New Club, and uh, Mad River Club, and McKinleyville. And also the North Bay Rotaract Club, which is somewhat inactive right now. But um, one of our uh, chief duties is to introduce the district governor when he visits local clubs. So it's my honor to introduce our own Dustin Littlefield. Uh, Dustin works for the property management at Fawn Creek Apartments here in Arcata. And he's also a real estate agent with North Coast Rentals. He's uh, joined our club back in, in 2012. And uh, early, he was very involved with Rotaract and Interact, and particularly reestablishing the North Bay Rotaract Club uh, as a, a functioning club, which became very active for, for uh, several years. Uh, he grew up here. He was born and uh, grew up here in Arcata and went to Humboldt State. He was a major in economics. Uh, he became uh, interested in leadership, and I first got to know him well in a leadership training uh, workshop uh, that was held by our district. I was very impressed because he, he was a very new member and quickly becoming interested in leadership. So um, in 2017, 2018, he became our president. And now uh, here he is. He's responsible for almost 50 clubs, visiting those clubs this fall. Uh, very busy man. And so let's give a warm welcome to our own district governor, Dustin Littlefield. Speech, did I hear that? <laughs> How's the frame? <laughs> A little taller. A little taller? <laughs> Can we lower this? <laughs> I'll tell you how I felt it. All right. That's fine. That's fine. Thank you, Howard. <clears throat> That's your best one yet. <laughs> I get better every time. So, good morning, Arcata Sunrise, and thank you for being here this morning, both in the room here and on Zoom. All right. Hello. Um, so I kind of I want to start uh, today actually by recognizing uh, the district leadership in our club because it's it's pretty impressive actually um, and I'll start with our <clears throat> past district governor and current vice governor Terry Clark please give her a round of applause and then as you all know our assistant governor uh, uh, Howard Stauffer here with a wonderful introduction all right. <laughs> I can't tell who, who's all on Zoom, but uh, uh, my lieutenant governor and uh, assistant governor for Area 1, Barbara Browning. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then uh, Ashley Deal, who has been an incredible district treasurer for the last, uh, I think, four years now. This is her fourth. She promised that if I was governor, she would stay on for one more year, and she did. So uh, uh, kudos, Ashley, for that. And she's transformed uh, the way our district has uh, uh, done the treasurer. She really has. So round of applause for her as well. 
All right. So then again, though, uh, with this, I'll, I'll, I'll lead in the speech by actually thanking and recognizing the leadership within our club for their service over the whole past, we'll call it year and a half, two years, from when the whole shelter in place uh, era happened. Because you think about it, and it was during this time, truly, when we were challenged to do pretty much everything in a new way and to trust and to rethink and to revamp what it meant to put service above self in the most challenging and unprecedented of times. So before I dive into the speech any further, let's give our past presidents and past club leadership a giant round of applause for helping us get us through those times. Okay, you both. Uh, no doubt our challenges coming out will be different than the ones going in. However, we all know our current president and our club leadership is creative, adaptable, and ready to take on any challenge that comes in front of us. And I am super excited and impressed with the work that we've been able to do and the work that we will continue to do. So with that, as you know, this year's Rotary International theme is Serve to Change Lives. Our international president, Shaker Mehta, is a relentless supporter of sharing the gift of Rotary with the world. And he wants us to dream big. In his words, Rotary kindled the spark within me to look beyond myself and embrace humanity. <clears throat> Service became a way of life for me. And I, like many others, adopted the guiding philosophy that service is the rent I pay for the space I occupy on this earth. And I'd want to be a good tenant of this earth. If you ever get a chance to see Shaker speak in person or on Zoom, I highly recommend it. He's an incredibly well-spoken and philosophical Rotarian and international president. So our district theme this year is a bit in the same vein. The theme uh, for, for our district is this is Rotary. So what does this is Rotary refer to? Is it referring to our clubs or our district? Is it referring to Rotary International, maybe all of that encompasses, or, or maybe it's referring to our traditions or, or the dreaded manual of procedures that we all love. Uh, uh, it's actually, it's referring to none of this. All right, this is Rotary, is referring to something that transcends our organization, our rules, our procedures, and even our traditions. This is Rotary, is about principles. And we all know the principles of Rotary, our motto, service above self, and our four-way test. So these are the things that tie together the most important thing in Rotary. Us, our people, the over 1.2 million, million people of all genders, faiths, races, beliefs, and backgrounds united under a simple set of principles. And that service to each other and to this planet is more important than service to ourselves. The theme reminds us that truth matters, that fairness matters, that all must benefit, and that in all we do or say, goodwill and friendship are paramount. So no matter where you are or what you think, we are all united under these important principles. Even if all the trappings of Rotary were to disappear, the principles would remain. Like I said, right now, we all know this, we're facing unprecedented challenges here at home and throughout the world. Call me naive, but I believe that adhering to the principles of Rotary will carry us through to a better place. Why? But think about it, because it has before. So since our founding, we've faced plagues, we've faced wars, we've faced strife, and we've faced political turmoil. Yet through it all, Rotary and its principles endured and makes the world a better place. So while the organization is a huge one, it's made up of people like us in this room having breakfast this morning, people who adhere to these principles and then use them to guide us through our everyday lives. We affirm these principles and make them real through service in our clubs. So clearly, if you're here now in this room or on Zoom, something about Rotary is very meaningful to you, very meaningful to you. We had every opportunity to walk away or better yet, to log out. And the fact that you stuck with it is remarkable. And there is truly something special about Rotary to you. So for us to be able to strengthen our clubs, we need to dive a little bit further into this, that whatever it was through it all, Rotary stuck with you. So think about it. Think to yourselves, why did it stick with you when the easiest path would have just been to walk away? Well, one of the reasons is our principles. Why? Because we believe them and we live them and we know that when collectively applied, we make the world a better place through our actions, through our foundations, through 
who we are as people. Rotary is a beacon of hope in so many places across the world, whether we're eradicating polio or we're building schools or we're bringing clean water to villages. We don't give up, we're Rotarians. It's who we are and it's what we do. And come on, I mean, Rotary is a little bit fun too, right? Being Rotarian isn't all about duty. We have socials and fellowships and fundraisers. Uh, and, and think about it, it's, Rotary is an unbelievable source of fellowship. So for me personally, Growing up here in Arcata, I've made lifelong friendships in the city I grew up in and met people I never would have met otherwise. All right. Uh, even through Rotary, I've joined an organization, a fellowship called SURF. Everybody knows this one. Uh, SURF is an acronym for Surfers Unite Rotarian Fellowship. And it's a good one. Uh, but uh, needless to say, I've met people in Hawaii and Australia and Indonesia and Florida through this. It's been an incredible source of fellowship. So actually kind of putting everything together and thinking about it, Rotary actually means many things to many people. Yet we're all here united by our principles. So another way to think about it, if I described my Rotary experience to a random person, it would be entirely different than, say, my dad's Rotary experience. So when he was president, his club raised money and traveled to Mexico and delivered wheelchairs to those who couldn't afford them. Other clubs have opened surgery centers in Nicaragua or simply raised money for local scholarships and parks. The other day I posted on Instagram and a longtime friend of mine responded uh, about Rotary. She said, you know what? I remember being a kid in Arcata and, and my dad being in the Arcata, uh, Arcata Noon Club and, and us going to events, people coming over. And those are great memories for me. So that's just another way or another meaning Rotary can have to someone. So <clears throat> to sum it up, Rotary is many things to many people, yet we are all united by our principles. So it's important when we talk about Rotary and when we go forward to strengthen our clubs, that we share both the experience of Rotary and the principles that bind us together. This is even more important than our impressive 1.2 million members in 30,000 clubs in 200 countries. So while these numbers are impressive, we can only strengthen our clubs again by sharing what makes Rotary special to us, what keeps us all going, and the principles that bind us. So on the topic of strengthening clubs, there are certain areas I believe we can focus on right now that will help us move forward with this. These specific areas are hybrids, membership, and projects. They intertwine fairly nicely, and we're all pretty much familiar with them right now. So let's get right into it and start talking about hybrids and what the word hybrid means to our club. I think it's a good place to start because the practice can actually be a lot more simple than the word can make it sound. So think about it. What is a hybrid? Essentially, it's a thing comprised of different elements. So in our case, rotary is the thing and the different elements are whatever we're gonna to bring to it. So think about it. How did we get here before March of 2020? The actuality of rotary and our clubs events and fundraisers and everything else becoming hybrid or even virtual <clears throat> was very low. I actually remember very distinctly <clears throat> the last event I was at, it was Pets in San Jose in 2020 and we just started bumping elbows and tapping feet instead of shaking hands. And I was at this event, no one really knew what direction things were gonna go. So needless to say, the virtual format was nowhere near our radar. And even with this actually, even with this, the accessibility and approachability to the common person of, of the technology wasn't necessarily there yet. Since <clears throat> that March, however, when we literally went to a 100% virtual format in the course of over a month and a half, all these obstacles have become a lot less onerous and much more part of our everyday lives. Zoom, think about it, is now a household name as recognizable as Google. And believe it or not, we have professionals inside and outside of our club who could help us run these style of events or fundraisers or whatever, whatever else it is we're gonna do on there. So let's think about this now, how have we used these new tools and technology. Let's talk about Zoom again real quick because it was the most connective element that we had during this period. But we also uh, have become more accustomed to using our smartphones uh, with apps like WhatsApp or Facebook and uh, FaceTiming. We've, uh, we've used this opportunity 
to move our training resources online. Uh, uh, although far from perfect, the My Rotary website and Learning Center is transforming into an incredibly useful training tool and uh, uh, just more informational tool. Our own club websites have become easier and more usable. Our familiarity with social media and seeing visible here is another area. And if you think about it, some of us have got creative and started doing podcasts or video logs or, or other forms of creative media outlet. So where are we headed with this? The point of me bringing up all the different ways that we've used technology and how quickly we got here is to hopefully make the word hybrid a bit less intimidating and a bit more useful. For some, for some, having meetings that are available online and in person is very achievable. Some will actually choose to be only online. For others, due to a myriad of reasons, having a hybrid style of meeting isn't going to happen and that's absolutely fine. That doesn't mean, however, that these clubs won't be uh, participating in the hybrid formats of the future. Think about it, our meetings are only one way, only one way that we deliver the Rotary experience. A very important way, in my opinion, but only one way keeping your club's websites current, communicating through social media and different outlets and, and being visual in the tech world. These are all ways of embracing being a hybrid club. I want to remind you to think about all the different ways that we've used technology over the past year and a half, two years now, and, 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 and reinforce the idea that these are all ways to embrace what we've learned over the past two years and all ways of embracing being a hybrid club. We've come a long way from bumping elbows and tapping feet instead of shaking hands. And these accomplishments will only help us as clubs, as an organization, and as friends and family move forward and stay productive in the years ahead. So I want to talk a bit today about membership. This is an ongoing topic. And congratulations, uh, Angela, for uh, joining our club. You are, well, you, you had, what, 15 minutes now to be the newest Rotarian in the world? All right, all right. I think you, could, I think you still hold it. So, <laughs> um, uh, But membership is an ongoing talk, topic. We talk about it every year. And uh, unfortunately, we are in a bit of decline, especially in uh, North America, that being the US and Canada. Uh, just a, a brief history here. I was on a call with our general secretary, John Hugo, and he had the RI staff run some uh, data about membership going back to our founding. And actually what it showed was that during most times of crisis, our membership has typically dropped around one to 2%. And that's actually what we saw during, during the, uh, uh, the March to July 1st period, about a drop of about one to 2%. Uh, there was a big uh, uh, exception uh, in those numbers that was the Great Depression. We saw about a 5% dip in numbers, but on average, it's about one to 2%. Our district went from 2,274 members to 2,049 members as of July 1st. And we also went from 47 clubs to 46 clubs, but this was through a club merger. I don't really consider that losing a club. I consider that a creative way to uh, move forward and be adaptable. So the first question around this, we start to ask ourselves is why? Why the decline in membership? And one of the major factors we deal with with Rotary is competition. Face it, there are a lot of other organizations that offer similar networking, there are other organizations that do similar service work, and there are plenty of ways to crowdsource funds right now. Another reason for the decline may be membership retention. We see we get new members in really quickly, but we, need to be, but we see them also leave as quickly as they came in. So uh, they're not necessarily sticking with us for the long haul. There are also other reasons like uh, the modern day work life and family, but I think we all understand the issue at hand. So what can we do about it? The number one thing we can do is adapt. So for some, the changes we need to make to bring in the new generations will be tough. But look, Rotary has always adapted to stay relevant. And this is why I say the decline is bad, but it's not all bad, because now we have the opportunity to be creative and do things in a new way to enhance the Rotary experience for our newest members and for our current members. So being caught up at the very least, at the very least in technology, and knowing what the word hybrid is going to mean to your club is a must. I talked about this earlier, so I won't go much further into that. Uh, another approach we can take for new members, and this is one I feel strongly about, is creating leadership pathways for uh, young professionals. So y'all know how old I am, so I can't use the joke that I've used this the whole time. So I'll, I'll skip the joke. But uh, what, what, what does young professional mean? Uh, I think it's what it always meant in Rotary, but it's people actually looking to go 
uh, a new direction in business or maybe starting a new business or, or uh, wanting to interact with a different way uh, with their community. Uh, if you think about it, Rotary was actually the original LinkedIn, right? That's why you join LinkedIn. You would join Rotary to make these connections and to do things in a different way. This is an area I know our organization can add a lot of value. So, for instance, leadership opportunities within our club, we all know them, being the committee chair or co-chair, signing up for a board position or maybe even wanting to be president or helping organize a fundraiser. So all of these different things range in complexity, but all help build on leadership skills for new members and for existing members. I actually remember one of my very first uh, uh, leadership opportunities in this club. It was after a meeting uh, about you know, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, uh, geez, seven years ago, and, uh, uh, and a good friend, we all know him well, George Caventa, walks up to me after the meeting, and he goes, uh, you know, Dustin, we've got this uh, basketball sponsorship coming up, the AIBT, and uh, uh, he goes, and guess what, buddy? And he pats me on, uh, pats me on the back and he goes, it's all yours. <laughs> you'll, you'll, be, you'll be just fine. And uh, I'm sitting there looking at George, George like a, a kid, just fine. Was not the word I had in my head. I was absolutely terrified. Uh, but in the end, uh, he was right. Uh, I was just fine. And it was actually through that experience that uh, reinforced the value of our organization and our leadership opportunities. So uh, uh, um, President Meta has the goal of us reaching 1.3 million members by this Rotary year. The end of this Rotary year, one of the ways he would like to see us achieve this is through the Each One Bring One initiative. So it's just that simple. Every Rotarian reach out to someone else, share Rotary experience, and find a way to bring them into a club, right? Bring them to a club meeting, bring them to a fundraiser, uh, bring them to an event, but find a way. Everyone in this room, find a way to reach out to someone else and share the Rotary experience. Another way to look at strengthening membership is, face it, by starting new clubs or being adaptable with our own club formats. One of the ways to keep pace with the changing times is to, is to look at, at starting clubs with more flexible formats. So there's still plenty of demand for our traditional style of club, my first personal favorite style of club. But allowing for new clubs that meet in different ways is a great opportunity. So think about it. Virtual clubs, cause-based clubs. Global clubs. These are just a few different opportunities for people to, to gather and, and create new clubs, rotary experience, increase our membership, and therefore expand on our impact. So the third area I'd like to talk about is projects, both that we do locally and globally. I mentioned this earlier, and Shaker Mater said, Shaker Mata says this is the year where we want to dream big. One of the things I was most impressed with when we were all on Zoom and sheltered in place was the amount of service we were able to get done in our living rooms, essentially, right? Now that we're back partially open or opening and closing, we do have the opportunity to get to projects that might have been forgotten about or postponed or, or dropped off the radar. From the conversations I've been having with other Rotarians, and I've talked to a lot of, a lot of Rotarians, this is the year where people are wanting to dream big and do more collaborative things and, and combine with people both locally and internationally. So I want to encourage our club to continue to do this, to reach out to other clubs, reach out to other organizations and reach deeper, uh, deeper in our own club membership and find a way to enhance our ability to make a difference in our community and around the world through our projects. As you may be aware, Rotary International has made, as of July 1st, 2021, the environment the seventh area of focus. So this is an absolutely amazing opportunity to expand on the different projects that we can get involved with. So let me give you a few ideas of what's been going on around the world. There are recycling sorting projects going on in Brazil, solar light projects in Kenya, water diversion projects in India, water conservation projects in Israel and Florida, sustainable farming projects in Mexico, eco stove projects in Guatemala, and clean energy projects in Armenia. You heard me talk last week about our collaborative effort with Mexico to do an environmental tour. So these are just a handful of the projects that are being done and the tip of the iceberg for the potential that this new area has to bring us both globally and locally. So lastly, and I didn't put this in my top three, but I'd like to encourage you to strengthen our club with, face it, good old-fashioned creativity, all right? It's, it's our fun. Have fun and be creative. And if that means sometimes you have to throw your hat over the fence to get something new done, go ahead and do it. 
None of our ideas or projects would be possible without someone first having a new idea that maybe no one's had before. Creativity, almost more than anything else, is the driver to our ability to continue moving forward as an organization and to keeping our club's vibrant spirit alive. Strengthening our clubs will be easy for some and difficult for others. What's important to remember is that Rotary is important to us and to the people and the communities that we serve. Again, this all can go back to the simple question of what is Rotary and then how are you gonna share and enhance the Rotary experience? I encourage you all to lean in to the changes that have happened and will continue to happen. Face it, the world was a rapidly changing place even before COVID. We all need to ensure that the work we do remains, the values we hold endure, and that we bring the next generations into the fold. So let's find flexible and meaningful ways to bring in new members, create leadership opportunities, dream big and be collaborative with our projects and continue to be creative through all of this. We are united in our principles, our service, and our commitment to truth, fairness, kindness, and diversity. We serve others above ourselves. We make things better and we care for humanity because we give. Rotary is not just an organization. Rotary is us, it's us on Zoom. It's all of us in this room working together. It's who we are and it's what we do. The methods, traditions, procedures, and even the people will change, but Rotary will endure because we care about it and we care about the world we serve. Thank you again. Rotary Club of Arcata Sunrise for offering me or nominating me for this amazing, amazing opportunity to serve as, your, serve as your governor this year. It's been an absolute honor, and I am uh, I'm proud of you all. Uh, I'm proud of this club, and I'm proud to say that this is Rotary. Thank you very much. Justin, thank you for your service to both our club uh, in the past and current, and now the entire district of Rotary 5130. I know we all appreciate you representing us as a great and faithful uh, to the core values of Rotary. I've had many discussions with you over the last uh, year since I agreed to do this, uh, and you've always <laughs> been a uh, fair and balanced uh, checkpoint to my own thoughts. I really appreciate that. So. Thank you, Dustin. Thank you, Ian. Very cool. great. All right. We've, we've also got a little something for you. You know, you said something, stay up here, about, um, about how Rotary needs to adapt and stay in tune with our core values. So as I was shopping for a little something for you, I, I picked out some of my favorite things. Okay. <laughs> but, but as with Rotary, our favorite things can change from day to day, from week to week, from year to year. So there's some things here that are actually didn't even exist as products as recently as a month ago, but I think you'll enjoy them. And then there's some in here that, you know, they've figured it out and they do the same every year. And, uh, you know, they're old favorites, but the, the mix of what's in this basket for you, uh, personal favorites of mine, but that changes over time. And I think that can be the same in Rotary. We can do some of the same things and we can do some new things too. So these are all local products for you. And I hope you enjoy with friends and family. Thank you so much, Ian. And You're welcome. Absolutely this is from the club. So. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you all. Absolutely.